So we failed with the Kodak Fun Saver. So we'll try this CVS camera now instead and see if we can do something with it. And so the back is now off. Now we do want to be very careful about where the capacitor is. As we remove the back side of this. Oops. And there is the circuit right there. And there's the dangerous capacitor. I'm going to show you See if there's a charge in there. We'll take our voltmeter because this one is discharged already. So maybe this is somewhat safer. To be absolutely safe, what I do is take a one kilo ohm resistor. A one kilo ohm resistor is here in Germany one that has the brown, black, black, brown, brown. That's brown, brown, black, black, brown, brown. Just ask for a one kilo ohm or 1000 ohm resistor and I hold it with an insulated pair of pliers and then I touch the leads there to make sure that I'm discharging. This is how you would discharge the capacitor. Let's do it from here. Right there. But it's not charged. Good. And the last safety thing that you can do is to take a screwdriver and discharge it this way. This can cause a spark if it was charged and can damage your screwdriver. You'd want to wear safety goggles if you do this to discharge. So discharging across the leads of the capacitor. And so now it's safe to touch and work with. So there's the there's the flash unit. The next step is to cut the leads of the capacitor. So it's another lead cut because the one from the Kodak camera was 300, oh, sorry, 330 volts, 160 microfarads, and this one from the CVS is a little bit smaller but still can give a powerful shock. So once we've removed the capacitor, then um, this is safe to touch now, so it's okay. We want to trim these two leads off, get them out of the way. That's all. Do with that. And now we want to get rid of the flash. And the transformer comes off with it. And you can just basically twist it until it comes off. So that was the flash assembly with transformer for the flash which leaves you with this so I get here please note that unlike the Fuji in this CVS circuit probably for patent reasons this is the positive terminal here and this is the negative so it was um, different looking at other people's tutorials about the Fuji 
now when you put this battery in like this so this side is the positive and this side is the negative and there's a little switch here and when you press it the light goes on and so that's what you're going to be your switch for the CFL it's right there and when you press that switch it closes the circuit and that's what turns on the light that's already on the board in order to run the CFL you'll need to close that so I'm gonna right now just close it down with an alligator clip fell and press it on these on this one and this one it goes on but somewhat intermittently and that's interesting First thing will be to solder a, a lead onto, onto this one because it seems pretty clear that that one works and then we have to decide do we have to cross this with this, make a jumper for that in order to make it work but we can pretty safely assume that this is one of the contacts here and who does that correspond to on the other side, it should be one of the terminals of this transformer is that one and then this one with something over there which was probably that resistor and so maybe it needs to be maybe it needs to be connected to that resistor in order to work and I'm going to take this point here And now, when we test the light bulb, we find that touching here, the light bulb goes on when these are touching. Go like that. As you can see, I soldered this black wire onto this terminal here and then I joined this and this this piece here I put a solder bridge to this which is where the on off button is the weird thing is that now when I close the circuit by pressing on it like this here's what happens press the circuit button closed and the light goes on even though it's not connected on the other side one of the leads the black one is going to the board the red one hasn't been connected yet and all we have is this open but when I close this circuit the light goes on and the closer I bring this, of course, the brighter it gets. If I actually touch it, then I get maximum brightness. But it doesn't seem to matter where I touch it. I can even touch it right to, the, to anything that's grounded, including my body. But even without grounding it, just floating in the air, it's almost as if there's an electromagnetic field. That's what's 
making it glow, the EMF. So where to attach this? Well, I guess I guess if I the maximum brightness is still across here and here. And now, the light goes on when I press the circuit on button. So that's the way I have it connected. I've got one of the leads from the the leads from the compact fluorescent going to here and the other one is a bridge I made between here and here and there's the switch that um, normally is closed that turns on the light And that should uh, that should enable me to complete the circuit because these were the pins that went down, and by touching that, they turned on the light. So our circuit also works with this bulb here, once I make the connection. But that's it, that's the, uh, the basic circuit. As you can see, the switch was this closing to that, so I've made my own area for the switch. So that'll be the switch there. And uh, this is for the one side of the compact fluorescent and this down here bridged over here is for the other. I connected those and uh, it works. Doesn't matter, there's no negative or positive to the compact fluorescent light bulb. And it goes. So now the thing is to put that in a box. That's nice. Now we're going to test how long the bulb stays lit. It also has a draw from that little bulb. And um, it's now, the battery is at 1.34 volts. It's now 419 in the afternoon. And we will see how long this stays lit.